I, I attempted to call smack for this, but it didn't work out. I am going to borrow that video. All right. The top 10 fall off. Phenomenal idea. All right. Smack kudos to you. 100% next time. Answer my call, bro. I feel blocked. I feel I feel a little like tarnished, st stained, if you will. You know, I thought I thought brothers stuck together. Anyhow, beyond that point, I want to talk about my own top 10 fall off. I think it's pretty cool. We're here with the chat. It's literally the same way he did it, bro. It's too good. Ha. <sighs> so we start off with 10. Yeah, we're going to start off with number 10. 10 is going to be the character that I feel like isn't completely falling off, but, you know, like kind of there. They're, they're slowly getting there. I feel like this is a little different, though. I don't think I have a 10 in mind, to be fair, because there's so many different characters that are up here. One eternity later. This is this is where my headspace is right now. If I had to like give you guys something about a 10, it's one of these four characters. And I can explain each one and maybe we can figure it out as to why. Fushwin, I don't think Fushwin entirely fell off. I think that better sustains came out. Fushwin was a, a very strong staple as to a sustained character that we could get that would allow us to do more than just sustain. And she did it very well. So I don't want to say that she's like falling off, but it is very clear that she's not being used as often. But that kind of goes for the rest of these characters, right? Zila is a character that over time, you the, the more you understand the game, the better you are at being able to play this character. And it's not just her, right? Boot Hill kind of falls under this category too. But Zila is one of those characters where like you, you don't need to be a Zila main to play Zila, but Zila mains definitely know how to play. Like they, they are, you know what I mean? They're in there. So this is kind of where I'm at with this character she still competes with some of the best when it comes to single target damage and being able to do everything on the board and when i say everything i mean zila is one of the characters that falls under hunt similar to our brand new baby girl face Shao. and because i'm a hunt character and the way my mechanic works i can also target another character so i can clear the board very fast compared to other regular hunt characters if we were to take boot hill again if you don't know how to play this character with his base kit Boot Hill is not clearing the wave. He's not clearing the board very fast. If you were to take Don Hung, regular Don Hung, he's not clearing the board very fast. If you take Imagine, or not Imagine Dragon Ratio, he's not clearing the board very fast in comparison to what Zila is capable of. Even if I were to give them all kind, kind of like a standard uh, gear set, if you will. So something along the lines of like 75% crit rate and, and you know, like the one and two crit ratio, basically. One and two crit ratio, like 3,200 plus attack and whatever they require for speed in zila's case she doesn't even need it so she has even more attack than the 3200 which makes it easier because she has attack boots if i were to give them something like that zila would still smoke uh or relatively speaking just perform better again face shot was just not like that that this character is od when it comes to the rest of the team i will say though about zila zila is at a point now where and this was a great topic that we brought up last night these other characters have support characters or sustains that are essentially built around them. A lot of the earlier cast didn't have characters built around or for them. They had characters that were just there. A good example of this is literally uh, Branya and Zila, right? Branya wasn't built for uh, for Zila. She just built to be a really good harmony unit and Zila took advantage of that. But if you were to look at something like Daniel and Sparkle, sparkle it feels like she was almost made for daniel right like her kit the way she functions the ability to drag him up like 50 percent, allowing him to play because he's slow so allowing him to play his attack boots she's always dragging him up basically 100 percent. she's always fulfilling his condition to have like skill points and then she's also boosting up his crit damage on top of whatever else that he needs it feels like she was made for him or, or more dedicated support zila doesn't have a dedicated support and I think that's what separates her as well as some of the other standard or first edition characters when it comes to the game. And then Branya, Branya's in a similar situation where Branya just works, but Branya's always been locked to let's play skill, right? Like skill, 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 and then, you know, whatever. But she has a basic attack that advances her forward. So I feel like Branya isn't just being, she's not being played as optimally as she could be getting played. Um, and because of that, you choose her a lot less. But then you also have Sparkle, who's just chosen a lot less, a lot more or less. That that's not a, you choose Sparkle even less than you do Branya, given the uh, option that you have both, and given the rest of the teams that you have. So that's kind of where my headspace is with this. So I was like, I can't really pick a ten, so to speak. All right, I'm going to put Fushwin up top. I'll figure out Branya after. I think these two are fine. 
I think Sparkle and Zila being in number 10 fits. Yeah, I, I, I feel like this fits, right? What, what are we thinking? What would you guys have as your number 10? It's a waifu factor. Nothing falls off in your heart. No, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not a waifu factor, bro. My gut says Zila. I believe it. You know, like if, if Zila is the play here, you could you could say Zila. What are we doing? We're doing the top 10 fall off tier list. I think it's really cool. I thought it was a fun idea and I kind of want to do it, you know, and I, I want you guys to participate in that with me to see who who you would put in some of these positions. You know what I mean? Just her multipliers compared to a minor character alone. Yeah, you know, and Zila has strong multipliers, right? Like her multipliers are crazy compared to a lot of the other characters in the game, especially like the version one or, or gen one characters. But I think over time, not investing into her, it, it you really see the difference. You know what I mean? And and it's clear that some of these characters, even with like, for instance, the exo toughness and the, uh, the MOC right now, the exo toughness, that kind of stuff, these different mechanics stop her from activating her mechanic to the point where you have to work harder now. Number nine, I think number nine Fushwin kind of fits right here. I think Fushwin fits pretty, pretty fair, so to speak. Um, I have something that I want to do interesting for like the two and three, but Fushwin fits for me for number nine. I, I don't really feel like dying is something that's hard to decide on or contest on really. I think it's just kind of there. Now eight, eight is a little bit, a little closer to what we got. Is 10 who's, no, so one is going to be the one that's fallen off the most. 10 is going to be the one that's fallen off the least. Yeah. I've mostly bench ratio in favor, in favor of face out. See, and th that's why I'm like, okay, you know, a lot of people are doing that, right? Like ratios done this thing, but face Shao existing, right? Face Shao existing doesn't eliminate ratio from doing whatever he was doing before. She She's just the better pickup. You know what I mean? But like, he's still really fucking strong. He's not as strong as her, but if you were to remove, let's say you removed Faisha and I still rocked, uh, where's she at? Where's baby girl? Excuse me. I, I belched again. That's my bad. I'll never do it again. If you were to still rock the traditional, uh, IPC emergency team, this team, it still blows up holes. It puts holes in people's body. You know, it still puts holes in people's body. So like, it's not like ratios falling off to the point where he's like, ah, right, yeah, bro, he's in number three. Like you can't use him anymore. He's bad. No, <laughs> she's just, she's so fucking strong that ratio just doesn't need to be on the team if you have face out. But I don't think that eliminates Dr. Ratio, which is why I don't want to put him on this list at all. Cause I don't, I don't think ratio is falling off. I just think people pull face out and now they're having a lot more fun with face out. So that's kind of where I'm at with that one. If we're looking at number eight or number seven, it, uh, the more I look at it, the more I look at number seven, I think low key, it might actually be Branya. The thing about Branya is very similar to like Sparkle and even Zila, where these characters are just, they require you to also invest into them to keep up with the game. And I don't think players want to do that, which is why the drop off rate is ridiculous when it comes to playing these type of characters. Branya, on the other hand, being a hyper carry, having 100% action events forward, crit damage boost, and I believe uh, just regular damage boost as well. It keeps her in, in the make of just being a strong harmony unit, right? So you're going to use her if you have her. If you want action advanced, like there's only so many options you have. Sparkle, Branya, or Robin. That's it. But six and five are definitely these two. Maybe. Actually, uh, they they might go up higher. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not. Because like fall off, the, the fall off is like. You were up here. I mean, you guys can't see that because, you know, my camera, but you were up here. Now you're down here. Silver. I think silver's in my six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ignore where I put these two because that's not where they go. Silver's my six. Silver would be my six because the thing about silver is that, like, you don't need her as much anymore because you have all of these different options that you can fill out a team with. But I think given the fact that she still has weakness implant, and it's something that not every main DPS character has, especially four star characters for new players. Th these two in particular, Branya or Silver, getting either of these two accidentally, we'll just throw that out there. This is phenomenal. Having a Silver on your account early game. So basically TL1 to like TL55, having Silver on your account throughout that entire period, just to make sure you can beat everything else in the game. You can still compete 
with everything else in the game and get your clears and MOC, your Pure Fiction, or even uh, Apocalyptic Shadow, Silver is still really freaking good to have. So I can't say that Silver would fall off and she'd be like in a three spot, right? But I can say that progressively over time, Silver does start to, to fall down or fall off given how, how much you can fill out your account. I think that's fair. Are we are we in agreement on that? Let's see. She's better for newer players who have no idea. Yep. Silver would have been uh, my most important character early game. Exactly. Exactly. She's still best for hyper carry Akron if you have no Fox Boy. Uh, oh, Jow Show. Yeah, I could see that because her single target damage is crazy good. And then, you know, we're, we're getting into a point. We're going to talk about it in another video later on, but we're getting to a point where like builds are something that I think more players should start to consider instead of just like what's the best relic set to run like what's everyone running i think if you start playing the game with your team in mind and what you can do i.e for me like my silver i have a quantum set silver which is my like sub dps silver so she's more focused on break effect or crit and then i have a win set silver who's only concerned with dropping debuffs and ults as often as possible so those two silvers play completely different and they don't fit on the same teams right that's why i really i really want star rail to give us a uh a gear loadout button or something like that but I, I think that's where silver lies like a win set silver bro there's very few things in this game that beat out the utility of a win set silver like win sets win set silver is stupid good depending on the team that you're running so i can't even i can't even say that she's like super super falling off i think it's just it's literally an investment thing do you want to invest into it or not and quantum set and win set are the two domains that are to this day still the well i won't say to this day but to my understanding to my knowledge they are the the two least farmed is quantum set and win set tiger hold that for me because i'm gonna forget it uh remind me as soon as we're done with this because I'm, I'm writing down all the ideas bro. when i tell y'all we're coming we're swinging heavy with content again. Oh yeah, bro. We're finishing October strong. <laughs> so that's where silver is gonna play out for me. Five, five is in the middle. Five is in the middle. They could have a nice little climb up given, you know what? You know what? Five is Kafka. Five is Kafka, not just Kafka. Where's, where's baby girl? This is gonna be our first double. These two. Five as a whole is just straight up DOT. As a whole, five is DOT, right? Because DOT, it's not that it's weak. I mean, it is now, but it's not that DOT or Kafka specifically has fallen off. It's that out of everything in the game, DOT has received no more support. We got Swan and that was it, right? We had May and May kind of universally works for everybody. But now that we're here, it's very clear. May is more geared towards break, right? Super break. We don't have anything for DOT. And if Fugue, the new Ting Yoon, I'm using air quotes because I know that you know that I know, if Ting Yoon comes out and she has nothing to do with DOT, that's yet another character that is not another Nihili character that is not helping DOT. Okay? So it's not that Kafka fell off because Kafka's bad. It's that literally there's nothing to help DOT. We ain't got no and, and if you go, I'm working on the video. It's gonna come out uh beginning of beginning of November or end of October, but if you saw my uh, my video that I was making, I made it a week ago on Twitch or two weeks ago on Twitch. It's basically how we can fix DOT. And we did it, technically. It did require the use of Divergent Universe or Simulated Universe. But um, with all of that in mind, we saw concepts come to life and we were able to like limit what we do and whatnot. Yo, crap, do your thing, bro. Thank you for hanging out. I appreciate that. Have a good one. And uh, I don't know how to pronounce Fugue. I'm just saying it the way that I think it's pronounced. Somebody in the comments is going to correct me. I already know it, but it is what it is. But DOT is in the middle. If we get a crazy, imagine if we got a support character or like a new Kafka, excuse me, that did crits. Fugue? Fugue is how you pronounce it. Okay, Fugue. Fugue. Interesting. Okay. So if we... If we got DOT, that's how it's pronounced. Okay, Fugue, gotcha. Let's say that hypothetically Fugue came out and she gave DOT, there's a, what's it called? Suspicion, I think is the name of it. Let's say Fugue came out and then she gave Suspicion, uh, Suspicion status or the effect to the enemies, the players, whatever. 
DOT would automatically shoot up as one of the better comps to run in the game again because of suspicion on top of Black Swan's uh, explosions and everything like that, right? Her Arcana. Or if we got a new Harmony unit, I was talking about this last night as an idea, a new Harmony unit that buffed Nihility. They were four Nihility characters and they allowed DOTs to crit. That would buff up. Imagine, bro, have y'all seen the damage that Arcana does when you stack it up above like 35? Imagine Arcana, 35 plus Arcana hitting a crit. You're dead. And I did it in the video. That's why I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Cause I, I've seen it happen. You're hitting your millions. It'd be insane. That's what would bring DOT up. So I think it's perfectly fine to put DOT here in the middle. You know, another thing that we haven't gotten for DOT, where is he at? Him. We haven't gotten a, a strong physical unit for DOT. Bleed is one of the nastiest DOTs in the game, and we don't have a good one. Luka is really good for Luka, but we don't have a five-star version of what Luka can do, or even better, a blast damage or AOE uh, bleed setter, right? Someone that can apply bleed or AO, uh, bleed from a blast perspective or AOE, that'd be fucking fantastic. We don't have one of those. DOT is just not receiving any support right now. That's why I think it's number five. Now we can get into four, three, two, one. So by four, I honestly think, I think Jing Liu, and I've always thought that Jing Liu is better than Dill Pickle at, at like an E0 perspective. Even if we were to look at this from an E0, S0 perspective, I think she is still like a little above, a little bit above Daniel. And then Daniel would be number three. I, I think these two characters, and it's neck and neck, you could literally put them one and two. There, there is no, I don't have a personal preference on like if Daniel's number four, or if Jing Liu is number three or vice versa. I think overall, overall, these are characters that, uh, and why I have them so low, I don't think she can't get another support that will drastically take her from the position she's in now to a much stronger position, right? Because she has someone to help her force weakness implant, which in this case would be silver. She has a Robin, she has a May, she has a Bronya, she has a Spark. Anything that would help her, she has it. And she's still in the position that she's in right now. Dill Pickle is the same exact way. Like, what are you going to do? Make a better Sparkle? You can make a better Sparkle, and then it it's not going to drastically take him from, like, I don't know what number he is. Number 29 to number fucking 10. I don't know. It just doesn't work that way. Now, number three. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Jing Yuan. And it's... It's his kit's fault. Jing Yuen's problem is the kit. I hate it. I hate I hate that for Jing Yuen. So because that's that's our general, right? Like I love me some general. I love me some Jing Yuen, bro. But like, it's his kit. They they really and you know they messed him over when they released him and like oh yeah he's a summon character he has follow up attacks da 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 da. da. And then they immediately started making better follow up characters. Where, where's she at? Freaking Topaz. Um, here we go. Topaz. Bro. Ratio. They even Himiko to a degree is better than Jing Yuen. Mechanic wise, not as a character. I mean, their follow up mechanic. What's Topaz's follow up mechanic for Numbi? Bang, bang, two follow-up attacks, you got it. Or pop ult, two regular attacks that count as follow-up attacks, you got it. Ratio, boom, drop my ult. Anything that touches this person, I'm throwing a, I'm throwing chalk immediately. Crazy good. And then Himiko, as soon as you get three breaks on the field, Robot Jones. You broke an elite, one elite counts as three breaks. Robot Jones. When you see an expert player playing Himiko, oh, it's so beautiful. All you see is literally pop ult skill i love it it's it's wonderful jingy win lightning lord he i think literally jingy win is holding lightning lord back lightning lord is a real character but anyway in all seriousness jingy win reached 10 stacks lightning lord still stuck in the back jingy win gets cc'd and i have 10 stacks lightning lord goes all the way to the fucking bottom that is the worst. Like they screwed him over so bad on this mechanic. I just I don't understand why they would even. I don't understand why they would think to do something like that. You said you said Wednesday eliminates this. I'm saying that word for a specific reason. Um, 
Wednesday could eliminate this, but now you're... I have to add a character, right, to fix his kit. This will be good. When Wednesday comes out, this will be good for Jing Yuen, hypothetically, if it works that way. Himiko does not need another character to fix her kit. Ratio does not need another character to fix his kit. Topaz does not need another character to fix his kit. They have characters to help enhance or boost their kit, right? He needs someone to fix his kit. This is why I say it's he he's a beta follow-up character they they didn't know or it feels like they didn't fully know what they were doing with jingy win before they released him they just did it you know and I, I hate that for him i really do number two is definitely argenti <laughs> number two is definitely argenti bro yeah he needs a whole new kit i would i would love if they just instead of giving us a new character if they just buffed jingy win like directly oh my god i'd love that I would love that so freaking much, dude. If they just buffed his kit directly and fixed his issues or made him more adept with the rest of the follow-up characters in the game, that'd be phenomenal. But Argenti is number two. Argenti is number two because this, this, he went from the first character to score a million damage to now it doesn't matter. Now it doesn't matter, bro. Argenti and his his kit holds him back too. I, I made that point way back when where I said like the double ult is a cool mechanic, but I don't know if I really like it. And then, of course, you know, they try and do things within his kit to make it so that like, oh, yeah, if he uses his skill, um, you know, and, and hits so many enemies, he gets X amount of energy back, you know, essentially to help him recover. Or if you have Ting Yoon, she's going to boost it by 50 percent. So she's basically giving him like a free ult. Like there's a couple different things that you can make work for Argenti. But I think ultimately it just holds him back and it also locks him down as an ear addition character. To where like and i because i haven't seen it i've never seen anyone run like a sub dps argenti or an argenti with a sub dps character on the field i feel like argenti literally wants to be the only damage deal on the field like at any given time or any given point in time he wants to be able to do the damage that's what i feel like with argenti so him going from a million to where he is now is like crazy and then you can do argenti jade i guess you could do argenti jade right would that would that work out though he doesn't have a follow-up attack so i guess it, it's consistently attacking but then how do you advance him forward Right, because like you're you're not taking advantage of what Jade wants, and you're not taking advantage of what Argenti wants, and then and then that team would have to run no sustain, wouldn't it? So it, it'd be pretty tough to get away with something like that. But of course, the last character that we're going to talk about today is Blade. I feel like Blade isn't everyone's number one. Blade Blade was the chosen one. His kit by design is perfect. Take away my own. He's vampiric. Take away my own HP. Enhance my damage. Do do more shit. Why no or wait no locha? I don't I don't think locha Luocha falls under any of these categories except if if I were to put him somewhere he'd have to go right next to Fushwin. He he would have to be here. These two are literally and Fushwin is better than Luocha. I've always said that for me personally, right? But Luocha is a character that if you have him, he's fine right like you don't you don't need anything else because sustains are really easy if you don't have locha you clearly don't need to pull him but if you already have an invested locha you pulled his light cone for whatever reason you know he's level 80 you've gave you've given him like a crazy good gear set keep using him he's great he's still doing your job free healing is free healing my healer's job is to heal me it's a little different than a preservation character right preservation character is a little bit more unique but a healer, your job is to literally keep me alive. Luocha keeps you alive in almost every single fight. I, I, I think except like two, I would have to have a, a, a recollection of what it is. But I, I know like one of the fights that he has an issue with at that time was, uh, was it was it Bug Boy? The Beetle? The Quantum Beetle? I think that was one of the issues because he, he just couldn't overheal, right? Like he couldn't heal faster than the damage that was happening. Sam, he can't heal faster than the damage that's happening. So if you out damage the speed at which he heals or the speed at which you can attack, that is his problem. Now, granted, we have characters that can steal turns. What do I mean by that? 
Imagine Zila being able to use Resurgence whenever the fuck she wanted. They shall. So when these extra attacks happen or Yun Li, the counters, you can play Luocha now without the speed of the characters in mind because you, now you have different characters that allow you to like sneak in attacks to heal yourself. It's the same way that we would use Gallagher, right? Gallagher, you don't pop his ult immediately. You use Gallagher's ult when you need it. And then he gets his turn immediately after that, right? Like the action advances himself forward to get emergency heals for the entire team. You have characters that do that. So it works the same way for Luocha as long as the field's up. Any attack that you do is gonna give everyone HP or uh, give that person, you know, their HP or whatever. But the final character is definitely Blade. Perfect kit, multipliers are dog shit. We, we never got someone to buff like HP for Blade specifically. It creates a problem for, for him overall. It also creates a problem because when it comes to like Blade in particular and how you build that team, Blade needs, yeah, he, he needs someone that's going to help him rack up stacks really fast to get his follow-up attacks. He needs a buffer. He also wants the enemies to have reduced defenses or, you know, all type res pin. Like he's in a similar situation. Like everything that I said about Zila in, in terms of like, you need to highly invest into the team for this character. That's Blade to, to infinity and beyond. You, you need so much for him to get the job done at this point. And it's not that he can't do the job. It's that you, you really would have had, like, you're not doing E0 Blade, E0, E0 or everybody else, and then getting the same clears that you're going to get for like Fei Shao, right? I, I know that's a weird comparison, I'm just saying. Or even Yun Li. A well-played Yun Li versus a well-played uh, Blade. Y Blade should not be equivalent to Yun Li. Clara, who I still use, I really use her anymore. Yeah, and, and Clara had a little bit of a come up. I thought about putting Clara on this list. I really did. She was going to go right next to Argenti or like somewhere in here between three and four, I would have put Clara, but Clara with supports, you know, with the new relic sets, follow-ups and things like that, Clara actually has a little bit of a come up. She, she went from what would have been hypothetically, Clara would have been in like three. Clara is like off the fall off list. Now, if you invest into the Clara, especially with the counter stuff going on right now, and then the fact that you can play her with Topaz, like Claire, Claire is up there. But that's it for me today, guys. I, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And like, obviously, I want y'all to tell me your own like top 10 that you feel. Because I, I think my top 10 might be a little different than some of the others, especially with like the DOT thing in mind where I combine the two of these here. And then I also combine like Luocha and Fushuen, uh, Fushuen towards the end. But because some characters fell off together, I think that's a better way to put that. And then other characters like my Zila, I, I know this for a fact. People consider me like the Zila. I'm not even a Zila man. I think I just like the Zila, uh, like like Gasser or whatever it is, like the the person that's always talking the propaganda, like the Zila propaganda. I can't be the propaganda for everything, though, bro. Like you guys said I was a propaganda for May. Y'all said I was a uh, propaganda for Topaz. Now it's Rappa. You know, like people can go back and say I'm Zila. Like before it was Akron. Like, dude, I can't be the propaganda for everything, man. All right, or agenda, right? Yeah, I can't, I can't be the agenda pusher for everything. Okay, I just I pick out good characters and I talk about why they're really good or why they're broken. Zila's number ten because out of all these characters, the high and the only one that I would swap is Zila and Dot. If I if Dot got like I said, if Dot gets a buff or uh, a direct buff support, whatever. DOT gets removed from this list. It's, it's no longer on the follow-up list. If your Zila is highly invested and you know what you're doing, she has like a solid team behind her. Or if for whatever reason they made a dedicated support just for Zila, she 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 comes off the follow-up list. So it is what it is. You know, you know what's funny? Clippy, I thought about Yang Ching. No, 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 no. Early game, bro. Early game, this motherfucker was number one. Number one. Like, and I mean like in terms of like DPS. Yang Ching was being compared to Zila. Early game, early meta, Yang Ching was up there with Zila, bro. They were like, bro, Yang Ching's the second best DPS in the game. The freezes, the follow-ups, the crit value. Oh, and if you have a signature light cone, bro, Yang Ching's top tier. He's top tier. The fall off, if, if I had to tell you anybody, felt, bro, make a new tier, it's Yang Ching. Hold on. <laughs> Wait, why, what the fuck is this? Time out. Time the fuck out, bro. Why did y'all do that to me? Swap these motherfuckers. What's going on here? There we go. It's Yang Ching. It is, it is Yang Ching, bro. The one character 
that went, literally went from I am at the top to I am at the bottom is Yang Ching. I can't believe I almost forgot about that, bro. Yang Ching is easily the number one character to go. He fell from grace. That boy was at the top. I mean, bro, we were we were running all. Hey, man, you want to run Winset Yang Ching? Why? I don't know. You just do it. Okay, cool. You want to run Musketeer? Why? I don't know. You can just do it. Cool. Quantum Set Yang Ching? Just do it. Cool. Uh, Ice Set Yang Ching? Just do it. Cool. You could run whatever the fuck you wanted. Yang Ching was at the top. You want to talk about Hyper Carry? Bro, they were trying to run No Sustain because of Freeze. So they were like, oh, yeah, you could run No Sustain Yang Ching and just freeze the enemy. You could run Japard Yang Ching and just freeze the enemy, right? Never get hit, never lose your buff. He was at the, t he was number one. <laughs> that is literally Yang Ching, bro. He oh was God, number God, one. God, That's God. a clip. He was number one. But whatever. Anyway, yo, thank y'all for watching today's video. Uh, do like, comment, subscribe, have fun. At the end of the day, it's all about having fun, right? Uh, hopefully you guys make your own or just talk about it and have fun with this. I want to see more people's opinions. I think this is a crazy good. I think this is really fun to just kind of see like where we as players and creators value a lot of these characters, but it is what it is. Anyway, I can't say my usual trophy is inappropriate for YouTube. Smell you later.